In this lesson, we'll take a look at this past paper question involving organic chemistry reactions. We have a lot of sub questions to consider based on the different organic reactions given. So let's jump right in. As I've mentioned in previous videos, they like asking organic reactions in terms of a flow diagram. So it says the flow diagram below shows how compound A, which is obviously this one over here, uh, can be used to prepare two different compounds, B and C. We've got three different reactions going on over here. First question, is compound A primary, secondary, or tertiary haloalkane? Give a reason for the answer. Now, let's just quickly speak about this. Compound A, this is the condensed formula or the condensed structural formula. It's a haloalkane because we can see the bromine atom over there. This is a molecular formula and again, a molecular formula. So often with molecular formulae, it's difficult to tell what the homologous series is of the compounds by quickly glancing at it, but we'll discuss that now. So first question, is compound A primary, secondary, or tertiary? It's basically like when they ask you, is a compound a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol? It's a similar type of question, but now they're just asking it in terms of haloalkanes. So my best piece of advice would be, if you can't see it, looking at the structural formula, draw out the condensed formula, draw out the structural formula. So we've got CH3, so that looks like this, carbon with three hydrogens. Then this carbon over here, that carbon has a branch attached to it. That is a methyl branch like that. Let's actually do it on the bottom just because I'm running out of space over here. So let's pop the methyl branch on that carbon, but let's just put it down here. It doesn't actually matter if you put it up or down as long as it's on the second carbon. And that second carbon also has a bromine atom attached to it. Then we've got a CH2, so a carbon with two H's like that. And then last but not least, we've got a CH3, a carbon with three H's. And that's the structural formula of this compound over here. Now, is it a primary, secondary, or tertiary haloalkane? So how you answer this is you say the carbon that is bonded to the haloalkane. How many other carbons is that carbon bonded to? So the carbon bonded to the haloalkane, this carbon here that I've highlighted in green, is bonded to one, two, three other carbons. Can you see that this green carbon is directly attached to three other carbons? So it is a tertiary haloalkane. And this is how they want you to answer it. So the halogen group is bonded to a carbon atom that is bonded to three other carbon atoms. 4.2 says consider reaction number one. So this reaction over here. Besides heat, write down the other reaction condition needed. Now, first of all, we need to think about what could possibly be happening in reaction number one. Let's take a look. So I just left compound A over here, drawn out in its structural formula because it might help me. Then something happened and I've got compound B. Now, take note, how many carbons does compound B have? Well, it'll still have five carbons because when, when something goes through an addition reaction or elimination or substitution, the amount of carbons in the compound does not change, okay? Unless we're talking about cracking, where we break up a long hydrocarbon molecule into smaller molecules, but we're not talking about that now. We've got C5H10. So if you take a look, my original compound had one, two, three, four, five carbons, which means this one is also going to have five carbons, four carbons in the main chain, just like that. And it's still going to keep its branch. That's not going to be gone. It's not, we're not going to get rid of it. Reaction one is clearly not an addition reaction. And how can I say that with so much confidence? Because take a look at every single carbon atom in compound A. There's no space for me to add anything. So it's definitely not addition. Could it be substitution? Did I swap out the bromine for something else? No, because usually we swap the bromine for an OH, but there's no OH. This, this is not alcohol. You can clearly see that that's not alcohol. What type of compound does that look like to you? If you had to say C5H10, if someone had to give you that molecular formula, I hope that you can see based on that molecular formula that this is an alkene. How do I know that? Because alkenes have the general formula CN, H2N. So this is an alkene, which means it went through elimination. Now, what did we remove? We clearly removed a bromine, okay, because there's no bromo over here. The bromine is gone and we have to remove an adjacent hydrogen. So this is dehydrohalogenation, which is elimination. And you should know for dehydrohalogenation, as I mentioned in my elimination video, you need heat and you also need a concentrated strong base such as sodium hydroxide, NaOH, or potassium hydroxide, ooh, something like that, or lithium hydroxide, LiOH. So you could have just said concentrated strong base, that's enough, or you could have said concentrated sodium hydroxide, concentrated potassium hydroxide, or you could have said concentrated strong base and give an example like I did. Write down the type of reaction that takes place. We already said that would be an elimination reaction. 
and more specifically, so I always go broader first. So when I say broader, I mean out of addition, elimination, and substitution, which one is it? So write the broad type first, and then I can be more specific if I want to. Dehydrohalogenation. Okay, so I'm just putting both there as my answer. But according to this memo, you could have said either elimination or dehydrohalogenation. 4.2.3 is worth five marks using structural formulae. So in other words, draw it out as I've done over here and as I started doing over there. Using structural formulae for the organic compounds, write down a balanced equation for the reaction. Now, if you go back to my video, my theory video on elimination, I mentioned how the elimination reaction, dehydrohalogenation, always takes this basic form. You start with the haloalkane first, then you add either sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide or lithium hydroxide, one of these concentrated strong bases. And what we get after the reaction is we get an alkene, we get water, always, 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 and we get the halogen that we eliminated. So in this case, it would be Br, and that will join up with this part of the base, the Na. So NaX, in this case, it'll be NaBr. So if we use potassium hydroxide over here, this would be K. Br. If we use lithium hydroxide over here, this would be LiBr. I hope that that makes sense. So it's always the halogen that you eliminated, which is represented by X. In this case, it's Br. And the part of the base, the cation part of the base, the positive ion from the base, either NaK or Li. But let's actually do this properly using structural formulae. So starting with the haloalkane. So lucky for us, we already drew it out over here. So I'm just redrawing it here as part of my answer. Where did this come from? I drew out the structural formula of this. It was given as a condensed structural formula. Then we're going to add, I'm going to choose sodium hydroxide. I don't need to do the structural formula of sodium hydroxide because they ask for structural formulae of the organic compounds. Now, when they say organic compounds, they mean alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, haloalkanes, all the one, all the groups we learned about. This is inorganic. NaOH is inorganic. So I can leave it like that. Then Remember, this is an elimination reaction. I started to draw the alkene over there. So what will happen is we will eliminate or get rid of or remove the bromine. And we need to remove one of these hydrogens. Now, remember what I taught you in my elimination video. So if you haven't watched that yet, please go watch it. Because if this doesn't make sense to you, you need to watch this simpler explanation. We need to remove the hydrogen from the carbon that already has the least hydrogens. So this first carbon has one, two, three hydrogens. This carbon has one two hydrogens. So we need to remove the hydrogen from the carbon that has the least. So I'm going to be removing this hydrogen because it has the least amount of hydrogens. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. The methyl group on the second carbon remains. That doesn't disappear anywhere. We are removing. I'm filling in all the other H's that I didn't remove. I'm removing this bromine and this hydrogen. So it's gone now. I'm going to take those circles away now. I'm just showing you where I removed them from like that add in everything else. So these things here are now gone. Because I removed them, I need to add a double bond over there to make sure that every carbon has four bonds. Then I need to say plus H2O because it's always going to form water. And then plus, I'm running out of space, I'm just doing it over here. This sodium Na joins up with this bromine Br. So just to color code, that sodium joins up with that bromine forming sodium bromide. And the other hydrogen that I removed joins up with the OH, and that's where the water comes from. So this alkene that we drew over here is known as the major product because it follows Zaitsev's rule. Zaitsev's rule is a rule that I applied to determine which hydrogen to take away from my reactants over here. So it forms the major product. If it said minor product over here, then we would have taken away this hydrogen instead of the one that we did take away. Okay, next question, 4.3. Consider reaction number two over here. So we know that this one over here is an alkene. We can even write its name if we want. We know what it looks like over there from our previous question. Then something happens to it and it now has still five carbons, 12 hydrogens and an oxygen and it is major product. So if we start with an alkene, which has double bonds and we end up with something with an oxygen, we are going to end up with an alcohol. Okay, that's where the, that's the oxygen. It forms an alcohol. So what happened in this reaction? It must have been an addition reaction. And if you read on in the question, you would have seen they say, write down the type of addition reaction. So we'll get to that. But first, they want to know the structural formula of compound C. Right. So let's just think about what's going on here. Let's take a look at compound B again. 
Now remember compound B has 10 hydrogens, but compound C suddenly has an oxygen and two more hydrogens. So we are clearly creating an alcohol, which means we need to add H2O. So remember when we're adding H2O to create or produce alcohol, we're going to add OH on one of our carbons and H on another one of our carbons. OH and H gives me H H2O. But how do I know which carbon to put what on? We are forming the major product once again. So we need to follow Markovnikov's rule for addition. And Markovnikov's rule says that we need to add the hydrogen to the carbon that already has the most hydrogens. So between this carbon versus this carbon, this carbon over here has zero hydrogens. You can see it's attached to a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon. This carbon over here has one hydrogen. So again, the rule says we need to add the hydrogen to the carbon that already has the most hydrogens. So I'm going to add the hydrogen to this carbon. So I'm adding the hydrogen to this carbon, which means I will add the OH to this carbon. And obviously we have to break the double bond over here. So break that double bond and in its place, we need to put a single bond. So that's the structural formula. Remember, we have to draw it out with all its little bond lines. Then our next question says, name or formula of the inorganic reactant or reagent needed. Well, how are we going to create an alcohol? What do I need? I need water. So if you want to say the name, you say water. Or if you want to give the formula, you say H2O. Remember, if the question only asks for the name and I said H2O, if I gave the formula, I would get it wrong. Okay, so you need to read the question. Here they ask for either or, so either or answer is acceptable. Write down the type of addition reaction that takes place. So they tell me it's addition. That makes sense. Adding water is called hydration. And that is just something you need to learn. If you add water, you are hydrating. If you drink water, you are hydrating. 4.4 says consider reaction number three over here. Take note, we are going from something with single bonds, a haloalkane, A, to something with also single bonds, an alcohol, C. So when we go from single to single bonds, the type of reaction that takes place is called a substitution reaction. Single, single, substitution. And that alone will get you your one mark. But if you want to give the specific substitution reaction, you should know that if you have a haloalkane and you're turning it into an alcohol, OH is going to be involved somewhere. Water potentially is one of our reactants. And that is therefore high hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is our substitution reaction. Besides heat, write down the other reaction condition needed. And this one is the dilute strong base. So for example, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide. So any of those. And now you might think, mm, this sounds familiar. Didn't we kind of say this earlier for some other reaction? Remember, dehydrohalogenation, my first reaction that I spoke about, involved concentrated strong base. The substitution, hydrolysis, involves dilute strong base. And they love asking dehydrohalogenation versus hydrolysis because they have similar reaction conditions. That's why the word dilute is very, very important. I hope that that was helpful. If you want more past paper questions on organic chemistry, check out the link below. Bye, everyone.